Hello and welcome back everyone. I am your host, Natalie Schlute. I'm your manifestation coach and spirit guide channeler. Today's episode is all about shadow work and how it interplays with the law of attraction. This is always an interesting question that comes up because there are so many different philosophies out there. People talk about how manifestation and law of attraction is all about raising your vibration and staying really positive and training your mind to not even go to the negative. And as you know, well-meaning as the people who say that are, there's this entire other side of us that we can't ignore, we don't want to suppress, that's important to heal and process, and that's some of the heavier stuff that goes on. Some of our traumas, some of the healing, some of the things that have happened in the past that create anger, resentment, sadness, depression, all those things, they need to be acknowledged and dealt with and addressed, and that's really what shadow work is. So this episode is all about, one, what is shadow work? <laughs> what does it look like? What does it really mean? And how do we go about doing shadow work? And then in addition to that, how much shadow work should we be doing? When it comes to focusing on this area of our life, it's going to be different for everyone, but it is possible to overdo the shadow work, which is a very interesting concept because if we're overdoing the shadow work, sometimes we're actually programming ourselves to be more in the state of trying to find all of the problems instead of really allowing ourselves to thrive and just be. But there's some subtle nuances to this. It's not black and white and it's really an individual experience. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe, like, and also hit that bell so that you get notified with all of my future videos. In addition to that, all of your engagement on this video helps to bring this information to the public. It helps show up more in feeds, so I truly greatly appreciate all of your interaction because it helps more people like you that need this information to find it and enjoy it. So let's start with the big question. What is shadow work? Shadow work is really, to begin with, just an observation, acknowledgement, and recognition of anything in you that is of a lower vibration. This could be thoughts and emotions surrounding your past, your present, your future. This could be traumas that you've dealt with in the past. This could be resentment or anger that you have towards other people, unresolved unforgiveness that maybe you have for yourself or someone else. There's a lot of things that can fall into this category of shadow work, but it's really the stuff that's not fun to deal with, right? This is the stuff that typically we don't enjoy feeling. We kind of want to move through it. Um, it's, it's holding us back. It just doesn't give us that happy feeling. You may have some unresolved conflict with friends, family, loved ones, coworkers, and all of that heavy energy. When you think about anything in your life, whether it's happening now, something in the future, or something in the past, and it causes an icky feeling of some sort, any sort of level of anger, depression, resentment, fear, frustration, you know, rage, like anything, sadness, all of those emotions, that's what we call shadow work. It's the stuff that's kind of in the darkness, the stuff that feels a little bit heavier that we generally either try to move through, we work through with our friends and family, we vent to our loved ones, we try to process it, or sometimes we just suppress it and we have to move on because the given situation where we are in that time and space, we don't have the ability to, um, to allow ourselves to process information. Or maybe it's just so heavy, it takes a really long time in order to process that out. Or you don't have the skill set necessarily to, to process all of those emotions and move forward in a really healthy way. But that's what shadow work is all about. It's about dealing with some of the heavy stuff in our life so that we can clear it out, so that we can heal it and move forward. And instead of looking back at these thoughts, these emotions, these events in our life that once brought us a lot of heaviness, a lot of darkness, a lot of uh, emotions that we necessarily weren't benefiting us in a lot of ways, although they were, <laughs> because everything, even the negative stuff benefits us, but those heavier things, once we are able to process it suddenly, now in the future, we can allow ourselves to turn that into wisdom. We can look back on the past. We can look back on these events with a neutral energy and actually be grateful that these may be uh, stressful or even horrific things happen to us because of the knowledge and wisdom that we've gained and how much we've actually evolved into a more higher level being that we genuinely want to be that's attracting more of what we want to manifest in our life. So why is this so important? This is important because what I have noticed just kind of in general across the board, this obviously doesn't cover every manifestation coach out there, but there is this hype in a lot of books and a lot of content that I see 
where people are just giving a ton of manifestation exercises and they're all exercises on raising your vibration, which is wonderful. It's great. I do it too, because that's part of what this whole process is with the law of attraction. It's actually training ourselves to be happier. It's training ourselves to be more optimistic. It's training ourselves to be in a higher state of mind, body, soul, vibration, frequency that we can have more of what we want simply by aligning ourselves energetically with it. So all of the happy and positive work that we're doing with law of attraction is absolutely great. But here's the caveat. If you're not uh, addressing some of these other things that are going on underneath the surface, then those are eventually going to rise to the surface and you're not going to know what to do with it. The shadow work is important because if you can imagine, say you're, you're cooking a stew or something and you're stirring the pot, when everything starts to boil, you know how sometimes when you're cooking vegetables and as stuff starts to boil, there's like this crummy stuff that kind of comes up to the top. It's kind of scummy. It's kind of icky and you use your spoon and you just scoop it all off. That's kind of what happens when we are going through this process of up leveling, raising our vibration. We are shifting our framework of how we think and how we feel and how we show up for our life and we're improving and we're improving. And as we're doing that, we're kind of stirring the pot. And so any things that are under the surface, any of those little things that have been going on from the past, things that you've been holding on to, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, often those things start to rise to the surface. And all of a sudden you become aware of these heavy things that maybe you haven't dealt with. There's maybe some lack of self-worth, um, lack of self-confidence. Maybe you're really hard on yourself. You're a perfectionism. And I have a tendency to notice that most of us are hardest on ourselves. People, when they start doing a lot of the law of attraction work and they start raising their vibration, there's this pattern of us being so hard on ourselves about things, about not getting there fast enough, about not learning this fast enough, about not manifesting fast enough, about not being a better person or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. And that is one of those underlying things, one of those shadows that can rise to the surface that needs to be dealt with, that needs to be processed and healed so that you can move up. The only way to rise up level by level by level in your life and evolve spiritually and emotionally and manifest more of what you want is so that you are actually able to clear those things out so you can get to the next level. Because if you don't clear out some of these shadows, it's going to be really, really difficult to level up because you have, you're holding on to lower vibration things in your psyche and in your body that are actually holding you back from getting to the next level, to that next chapter in your life. And so if you don't do that work to clear it out, you're actually just holding yourself back. And this is why the shadow work is so important to just go inward, to be able to self-reflect and be able to process through what we're thinking and feeling and come to a better space. This is a very natural process that we all experience and need to go through. One great analogy that you can think about is, let's say you're going to remodel and redecorate your bedroom. Well, in order to do that, you can't just bring in a bunch of brand new furniture. You can't just manifest all these things and drop them in the room and think the room is going to look amazing. First, you have to clear out the old furniture, right? You actually go and need to, you know, paint the walls, wipe them down, either get a heavy duty vacuum and maybe even a vacuum cleaner in there and clean it up. Or you need to rip out the carpet and lay new hardwood floors, whatever you want that to be like. But we kind of need to go and we need to reframe the basis of the entire bedroom and clean it up before we can bring the new furniture in. We need to get rid of the old. We need to clean things up. We need to see it in a new light. We need to get some better lighting, maybe some sconces or some beautiful lamps or something so that we can light up that room and get the baseline, the framework really clean. And then now we're ready for all the new furniture. Now we're ready for all of the beautiful things that we've always wanted in that dream bedroom. But we can't just bring new things in when there's still all this gunk, there's dirt, there's a lot of dust on the floorboards. And, you know, there needs to be some upgrades in there and things that are going to help make it really beautiful and clean and feel and become what you truly want it to be. This is how it is with our mind and our emotions too. We do need to do some healing of our past and clear out some of the old stuff and reframe it and we work it so that we get to the point where now it's very easy to bring in the new mindset. It's very easy to bring in the positive thoughts and the new way of thinking and the new way of showing up and approaching your life because you've done the leg work, you've done the shadow work to clear out some of the old stuff so it's easy to bring in the new stuff one process that I created that I love to teach my students is the letting go process. This is a four step process that I created and I found that really helped me to kind of forgive and let go of the past. And first it's just acknowledging. We have to acknowledge that there's something that we're holding on to that no longer serves us. 
often things kind of get hidden, right? We have a lot of blind spots, including myself. This is across the board. This is just how the brain works. It's how the human humanity works. It's how we are built. We are built to only see what we need to see and what we want to see and what we're ready to see within ourselves. And so it's important first and foremost to have some self-awareness, to watch your thoughts, to watch your, your emotions, your patterns, your habits. And then when you see something that's no longer serving you and you recognize it because you're ready to see it, we have to acknowledge like, wow, okay, I have this pattern. I have this pattern in my mindset. I have this habit that I'm doing over and over again, and it's not getting me the results that I want. It's actually holding me back. It's no longer in alignment with who I want to become in order to manifest the life that I really desire and become the person I truly want to be. And so first we just have to acknowledge that it's there right? We just have to show up for it and be like, I see you. Like, I see that pattern within myself. I see what I'm doing. Once we have that acknowledgement, then we actually need to thank it. We need to be say thank you for having that negative pattern or so-called negative pattern, right? It's not necessarily negative, but it's not, it's not benefiting us in a lot of ways. It's there to teach us something. So thank that pattern, whether it's a mindset pattern, a habitual pattern, an emotional pattern, whatever it is, uh, resentment, something you've been holding on to, anger from the past, whatever it may be, thank it for being there. That showed up for you because you needed it to be there. It was a survival mechanism that helped you cope in the moment. Whatever that experience was, however that pattern was built, it was actually there to serve you. Understand that your subconscious mind is not very smart. It's not very logical. It's programmed very easily, very quickly, especially when there are high emotions attached to it. A big trauma that you went through, something really extreme. Often those things cause us to create these patterns very, very quickly out of a survival mechanism. And it's there to benefit us. It's there to protect us. It's there to help us cope and deal with our life in a better way. But understand that doesn't necessarily help us in the long haul. And that doesn't necessarily help us to reach the bigger things that we want to manifest in our life. And so at a certain point, we need to deal with it, right? This is a shadow. So we acknowledge it. We thank it. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for protecting me. Thank you so much for helping me cope through this traumatic time in my life. And then once we've thanked it, now you have to tell it it's time to let go. Like we're ready. I, as much as I love you and I appreciate you, I no longer want to hold on to this pattern. I no longer want to hold on to this limiting belief that I'm holding on to, this emotional programming that I have, this habit that I have that's not serving me. And you, you're doing this so that you can tell your subconscious mind what you actually want. First, you have to say thanks, but then you need to tell it, okay, it's time to let this go. And the fourth step is choosing the new pattern. What is the new emotional baseline that you want to feel in your life? What is the new belief system that you want to hold on to? What is the new belief system around that old trauma or the hurt or the resentment or the event? Like, how are you now going to reframe and re-see that old event in a new way? Because if you don't do this last part, and this is one that I see across the board, I see a lot, there's a lot of different like forgiveness and letting go practices over there where you just send it love and you like send it off, which is beautiful and it's great. But if you never do the legwork to actually shift how you're thinking, to actually shift and choose a new way of seeing the world, choose a new way of seeing this event, choose a new way of seeing yourself, choosing a new way of showing up for yourself, then even though you send it off with love and light, you're not going to have a conscious thing that you can shift to when it resurfaces. Because this is not a one and done. This is not a, I one time let it go and I've sent it off with love and light and now I never feel that way again or it never comes up. These are patterns. Your thoughts, your beliefs, your hate, your anger, your resentment, all of that stuff, the lack of self-worth, these are patterns. And patterns are going to continue to surface until you reprogram it. But you want to do it in a loving way with this letting go process. One, acknowledge. Two, thank it. Three, tell it you're going to let it go. And then four, you program yourself with the new pattern that you want to create. And you may have to do this several times. With the subconscious mind, it can take anywhere to five to 10 times of reprogramming before it actually sticks. If it's really deeply ingrained emotionally in your body, then you may have to do a little more work. You may have to sit with it a lot more. You may have to program yourself with an entirely new emotion, a vibration, a feeling in your body before it truly sets in. So there is some legwork that needs to be done here. Sometimes one and done. You can sometimes go through this process and there's so much conviction. There's so much belief. There's so much trust in the new pattern. There's so much 
of a like logical buy-in and aha, or even an emotional buy-in that it is just done and it's so quick and easy. But often with some of the big stuff that we're dealing with that are really holding us back from the past or you know any patterns that we have, it, it's going to take a little bit more work. But it's totally worth it. Why? Because you are going to feel better. You are going to evolve mentally, emotionally. You're going to become a wiser person. You're going to manifest more of what you want, right? Bottom line, that's why you're watching this video is because you want to know how to manifest more. And that is what's going to happen. If you have any questions about this process so far, be sure to leave some comments in the notes below this video so that I can answer any of those questions that you have. Be sure to like this video and subscribe so that you get notified again and again with all of the upcoming episodes. Now this is just one of over a dozen different processes that I teach my students in my online academy, Step Into Your Power Academy, where you learn how to truly manifest everything that you want. I give you all of the guidelines, all of the processes, things that you can do daily, weekly, over and over again, coming back to the content with guided meditations, with workbooks, step-by-step -step procedures, so that you know how to navigate your inner world, your mind, your emotions, your habits, so that you really get to manifest on a quantum level and see the changes happening even faster in your life than you ever could with just some of these quick tip type of videos. So if you're interested in doing more of this type of work with me, be sure to get on my email list so that you can get notified when my academy opens its doors again. So now that you better understand what shadow work is and how it shows up and how it benefits us in order to manifest more of what we want, next big question that I hear is how much of this work do I do? This is a very gray area. Um, and maybe if I just tell you a little bit about me, that will also help. But I typically find that with me and with my students, when there's too much shadow work, when we start focusing too much on the negative, because everyone's mind's a little bit different. Some people have a little more OCD tendencies than others, right? Some people are a little more manic and get a little bit more on that train. And I have seen people that start to do a lot of inner child work, and then they just go down the rabbit hole with the inner child work, and they start digging up all of their trauma, and it gets to be very overwhelming. And they're doing so much healing work on their trauma. They're doing so much of that, that then they're neglecting all of the positive mindset work. They're neglecting some of the positive reframing and actually go spiraling downward a little bit. And so understand that there's a balance here and it's going to look very different for everyone. I have been working on my inner self for close to 20 years now. I started, you know, in my teens and then in my early 20s, it really picked up speed. In the last 10 to 15 years, this has been my main focus is healing myself and really learning how to manifest more of what I want. And to be very honest, in the beginning, it was a lot. I was doing a lot more inner work. I was doing a lot more trauma work, a lot more shadow work because I had to. I had so much trauma from my childhood, so many repressed emotions that I never expressed, never verbalized, didn't let myself to feel anger or rage. And I held so much in. I was so afraid to communicate anything because of the trauma that I was experiencing in my younger years. And I covered it up with drugs and alcohol and a lot of that stuff in my teens. And so for me, there was a lot more inner work in the beginning. Now that I'm 10 to 15 years, you know, almost 20 years down the road, I don't do very much when it comes to the shadow work. Stuff comes up. I'm still doing shadow work. There are still things that come up on a cyclical basis, things that I still have to deal with, but it's much smaller percentage than it used to be five, 10 or 15 years ago for me because I've cleared out so much. And I'm now at such a higher vibration mentally and emotionally that the inner work is a lot easier. I don't get triggered. I don't get as emotional about it. I see it for what it is. I can feel things coming up in my body and there's still some fear. There's still a little bit of anger or anxiety or sadness or, you know, just a grief. Like that stuff still comes up for me, but it's at a much smaller extent. For example, like 10 years ago, I was at a place where I would have crying meltdowns, like full on meltdowns at least once or twice a month. It was kind of a regular thing that I would just break down and cry. I haven't done that in years because I've done so much inner work on healing. I am such a different person than I am today than I was five or 10 years ago. And so understand that in the beginning, you may feel like you need to do more trauma work, but I want to make sure that you balance it out. So a rule of thumb, and this can vary for everyone, but you know, maybe as much as 70% positive work and 30% doing shadow work or 80, 20, 80 positive, 20, is your shadow work. Right now I feel like I'm more at a 90-10 where most of my life I spend in the positive and then the shadow work is really just when things come up. 
So understand that there's a couple ways to approach shadow work. If you're doing some work, like let's say you're reading a book or you're going through my online course and you have journal prompts and you're actually attempting to dig in and figure out what's going on, there can be times where you just set aside to actually do your sh shadow work. And in the beginning, you, you need to do that because you're learning, right? You're practicing. You're beginning the process of how do I go through the steps to get through this? How do I actually process my emotions? How do I acknowledge them? How do I find them? How do I heal them? And then how do I move through it? Like there's this whole, you know, line of things that you can go through in order to get from point A to point B of actually healing those old traumas. That's too much for this video today. This ep <laughs> That's way too much information to be able to put into this episode today. But understand that you do need to learn and go through these processes so that you have these tools to help yourself in the future. Now, I'm at the place where I know the tools. I've been doing the tools for decades. And so for me, it's really just when things come up, right? When things happen, when there's big life events or when I'm just have in a funk and I'm like, why do I feel this way? And I have to do some self-reflection, go into meditation, sit with my body, sit with my thoughts, sit with my emotions and ask myself some questions. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking this thought? What's this funky feeling going on? I don't even know what this emotion is, but why do I feel really uncomfortable right now? And as you start to do that work, when it comes up, now I'm nipping it in the bud. Now I just go straight to it and I process things as they show up for me. Understand that it's very, very normal to go through cycles of processing things. We actually have an energetic shift in our body with what's going on celestially. So uh, when the full moon and the new moon happens or when planets are in retrograde, there's this magnetic pull on our body. So often that's kind of like when we're stirring the pot, right? That's when stuff will rise to the surface because now we have this, this polarity shift in our body, this magnetic shift in our body. And often when that happens, all of a sudden we become very aware of these subconscious feelings, emotions, thoughts, programmings, and patterns that we have. And that's when we're typically ready to deal with it. When it comes up, it's because we're ready to deal with it. So it happens around the full moon, the new moon. For a lot of women, it happens around our menstrual cycle. Men, it might happen for you around that time too, if you're with a woman, just because it's a natural cycle for you to be connected with that person. Or it might just be you're more connected to the moon cycle or just when something happens, right? When when there's a loss in the family, when there's big crisis going on in whatever way, shape or form that shows up for you in your life, those things usually come up because we're ready to deal with them in that moment. Whether we think we're ready or not, doesn't matter. Often we think, gosh, things were going so great. Why is, why were things on the up and up and up and doing wonderfully? And then now I feel like I was knocked down again. It's because you were raising your vibration. You were doing really well and you are on the up and up. But in order to get to the next level, you have to deal with this lower vibration, whatever it is, right? This shadow that's showing up for you, whether it's something internal or external in your environment, whether it's, okay, now I need to reevaluate my circle of friends and I, I need to stand up for myself. I need to be more assertive in my relationship with my family, whatever that looks like those things come up because in order to get to the next level, we do have to process and deal with it and show up as a new version of ourselves in order to get to that next step. And often we need to reprocess things that may have processed out like a year ago, six months ago, a few years ago, you may have thought you healed something a while back and then all of a sudden it's showing up for you again in your life. Understand it's not that you didn't do the work. It's not that you didn't do a great job of healing that in the past. It just means that you have up leveled so much. You are a new version of yourself that the way you healed that a year ago, you now have a new capability to heal it on a different level. Now it's going to keep coming up until you have completely cleared it out. And sometimes we can only clear it out as much as we can for who we are in the moment, but maybe there's more that needs to be cleared out a couple years from now because by the time we get there, we are at such a new level of identity and our vibration is so much higher, we can now process it at a higher level. So just know if things keep coming up for you repetitively, it's not a bad thing, you're not being punished. It just means there's a new level of healing and processing that needs to happen and that's totally normal. You are not going backwards, right? Let me make that clear. You are not going backwards. When you have some sort of crisis or some sort of meltdown or something that happens and you were doing really good and then you feel like you got knocked back down, you are never, ever, ever going backwards. It is not possible 
for you to go backwards because all of the things that you have learned, all of the things that you have experienced, all of the things that you have processed, you have not lost that wisdom. You are still on the up and up. We think that our healing and our manifestation abilities are this like straight line going from one lower corner all the way up into the other corner as if that's our trajectory is this beautiful straight line but no it's this big up and then a drop down and then another big up and then a drop down and then we feel like we're going backwards but we're actually going up but we feel more like we're down even though we're still moving forward on the timeline and so it can look really really crazy it can feel really crazy but understand you can never ever go backwards if something comes up for you again you just needed to deal with it at a new level. Maybe you didn't process it fully. You process it emotionally, but not mentally. Maybe you process it mentally, but not emotionally. So understand there's a lot of things that can happen, but all you need to do is have some love, some patience and some grace and continue to do the work because it is always worth it. You will always come out ahead. You will always be evolving. You will always becoming a better, best version of yourself that's manifesting more of what you want. And so when you show up with for these things in your life, these shadows in your life with a lot of love and grace, and you allow yourself to accept that this is just a part of the human journey. We're on planet Earth. This is just part of what we do. But we can see it as this beautiful, neutral thing. We can see it as this thing that gets to be a part of us so that we get to evolve, so that we get to become more of the person that we genuinely want to be. If you absolutely love this video, let me know what you learned in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that bell so that you get notified with all of my upcoming videos. And if you love to binge watch, be sure to check out my YouTube page. I have so many videos for you. I have categorized them in these beautiful playlists so that you can binge watch and really enjoy everything that has to do with manifestation, channeling your spirit guides, evolving on your own level, developing your intuition, and so much more. I am so grateful for you staying tuned with me, and I can't wait to see you in the next episode.